morning and welcome to another morning prayer slash morning devotion um it is really a privilege as i usually say to share with you in this manner and to fellowship with everyone who is on from whether you're from the greater portmore tabernacles or you're just here based on an invite or you, are, you have been following us throughout the many weeks that we've been on morning devotion so i just want to say thank you for joining us this morning joining me this morning and i just before i go into what i plan on speaking about or what i was um what i was led to speak about let me just open in prayer and then we'll get into it let's pray holy god and our righteous father lord we give you thanks for another day thanks for allowing us to see another beautiful friday friday morning lord you have sent coolness for many of us who are within this era lord it is it is it is you that we give honor and glory for lord in every way so lord we, as i come before you this morning lord i pray that whatever i am led to share lord let it not be done of self let it not be done of vain glory but lord let your word speak to your people through me and may it touch the hearts that needs to be touched in your holy and righteous name i pray amen and amen so I again want to thank you for joining me this morning and you know earlier I was playing the song the song the name of the song is promises I kind of fell in love with that song and you know as you can see I could have I could listen to that song a whole day but um, it's promises from the, the Maverick City group and it's Joe Barnes and Naomi Rain so for just in case you may be interested in listening to that song a little later um promises is a title and it's from joe l barnes and naomi rain of the maverick city production so this morning i would just love to to to, to say that um this morning we'll be doing somewhat of an audit and this audit is in relation to our I would say our verbal communication or our words and you know there's a popular phrase that is usually said a phrase that has been around for many for many years probably long long before any of us not probably long before any of us were ever even thought of or, or, or before any of us were born it says sticks and stones 
may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I, the truth is this, this phrase originated out of a, a, a thrust, I would say, to, to, to equip persons to deal with verbal bullying. And it goes back as far as 1862, based on the research. This phrase goes back to 1862. And it, it may have been effective in helping persons to think about verbal bullying in a particular way. Um, not so much negative, but for them not to be downhearted by, these, by comments made by persons. But the truth is, when you really examine the, 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 the phrase, when you really examine what, examine what it is saying, sticks and stones may be, break my bones, but words will never hurt me. It is something that is absolutely, I would say, far from the truth. Because the reality is, yes, sticks and stones can break our bones, but words can hurt us even more than what sticks and stones would have done to us. In fact, even after our physical wounds are healed, words, the, the, the hurt that words leave, sometimes it's something that takes many years, even beyond a physical wound, to heal. So words are powerful, and the impact of words ha can have a great, a great impact on us, whether positive or negatively. So even though I'm speaking about words and its impact, it can be positive too because many of us can recall persons in our lives who, who basically spoke into our lives, spoke positive stuff into our lives and it has made us who we are today. But on the contrary, we do have incidents where persons have spoken things about us and things that may have hurt us from many years ago and it, it goes back to the phrase that was said sticks and stones but those words hurt sometimes deeper than any stick or stone or anything else that could have hurt us physically so this morning i just want to because there are many levels to this whole thing about words and the power of words um, I will not, I'm, I'm not be, time will not be sufficient for me to uncover or unpack all of the levels that relate to these things because it's a, it's, a, it's a topic that goes very deep and it's something that has many different avenues that it could be taken. But this morning I'll be taking it from the level of us doing an actual audit on our own selves to see you know, whether or not we are using words that empower our words that tear down and how we can use the word of God to help us and guide us in ensuring that our words are a reflection of God and a reflection of the peace that we say we have within. But what does the Bible say about the power of words? And the Bible often uses the tongue to speak about the word. So when the Bible speaks about the tongue, it's not necessarily speaking about the physical tongue but it's speaking about the word it's speaking about the words that flow through our mouths because the truth is and when you look at it biologically we cannot speak without our tongues so the bible is in fact referring to words when it speaks about the tongue and the, and the, and, the, and if you go through from genesis to revelation there are many references about the tongue and us guarding our tongue and the power of the tongue one such verse and one of the most powerful verses that reveals the power of the tongue in in the most vivid way is proverbs 18 verse 21 and it reads death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat it eat its fruits so the tongue is a very powerful thing. In fact, some ver there is a particular verse of scripture that refers to the tongue as a evil, as a evil aspect of us if we don't guard it properly. 
unruly. In fact, I think the verse actually says an unruly evil. So the truth is, when the Bible refers to the tongue, a lot of the times it speaks to it in a negative sense. And Romans 10 verse 10 also speaks to the power of the tongue or the power of our words. Because even salvation, our words are powerful. Our words are confession that is made unto salvation. Because Romans 10 verse 10 states that for with our heart we believe unto and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation so even in salvation our mouth and our words are are powerful so so the truth is imagine having such a powerful thing in our possession i don't want even to say a weapon but it can be used as a weapon but imagine having such a powerful thing in our possession so as people of God, we should, all, we should understand the power of the tongue, but we should also be mindful of how we are using our words and how we use those words to impact others, impact our own lives, impact things around us, because that is how powerful it is. It says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So we can either speak life, or speak death so let's do an audit this morning let us inspect let us examine let us probe let us scrutinize let us review analyze assess appraise evaluate vet peruse whatever word you want to use our verbal communication our words this morning so there are four areas that I will touch on in terms of our words and it's just a it's just a way of us examining ourselves because the truth is none of us are perfect in this regard the bible itself wouldn't have referred to the tongue in so many ways if it was something that was easy to be done if it was something that was easy to bridle as the bible said the tongue is one of the hardest it is so small but yet so powerful so this morning we have to first examine you know how we are using our words and then we can take steps, take the necessary steps with the help of God to see how best we can ensure that our tongues are being used for good and not for bad. So the first area I want to touch on out of the four areas is that are our words true or are they false? Is it a fabrication or as a famous attorney would have said, is it a pathology? It is our tongues pathologically mendacious so the first area i want to touch on is whether our words are true so truth truth is a very critical thing and to say that we have never lied would be a very one of the biggest lies we could ever tell but lying should never become, especially as children of God, lying should never become a lifestyle practice. There are, there are times when we fail in this regard, but we should never be, we should never be known to be liars, especially as children of God. And generally too, honesty, as they say, is the best policy. And a lot of the times, or sometimes I would say, um some some of us we are not we are not as honest as we should be in certain situations especially when our backs are against the wall but the truth is in all circumstances honesty is the best policy and words are what are used to deceive often of the times and proverbs 12 verse 22 indicates to us how serious the Lord takes lying because the Lord but they that deal truly are his delight so those that deal truly are God's delight but lying lips are an abomination so we should never take on this characteristic of being li liars or of being uh, telling are saying things that are not true. Psalm 
34, 13 states that keep, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. So the truth is, it is, it is a mandate through the word for us to be honest, for us to be truthful in our words, in, our, in whatever we say. And there are, sometimes we, as I'm seeing here being said, we say big and little lie. But no lie is big or no lie is little. All lie is the same. And even when we give certain stories sometimes, we, we, we may exaggerate the truth, as we may say it, or we may, we may build on something or, or, or try to make something exciting. But the Bible speaks about even those things, those things that we call big, big and little lie, white lie and other lie. So it is important that we are honest in everything that we do and seek the truth because sometimes too we it's not that we are intentionally telling lies or intentionally not speaking what it is what is as it is but because we haven't gone to the to the to the end of finding out the truth about a matter sometimes we run with it in fact a lot of advertisements are now on about social media running with things that we see let us take time in our relationships, in, 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 in our daily lives to find out what is the truth in a particular matter before we say or even do anything. So the second thing I want to touch on is are our words building up or edifying or are they tearing down? Again, it goes back to the power of words. As it says, life and death. And I'll always go back to that because that is the most powerful for me illustration about words and our words so are our words edifying or are they tearing down when we say edify we mean build up we mean to to enlighten and our words can both be constructive and it can be destructive matthew 12 36 is a very humbling and a very concerning verse for, for, for me. What it states is that every idle word that we speak, they shall be given account of on the day of judgment. Imagine that. Imagine that. So the, even the very words that we speak idly, we, have, we will have to give an account for on the day of judgment. Ephesians 4 verse 29 indicates to us that let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to use to, to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So again we are reminded that our words should not be used to tear down or this used to, to be used destructively but is to be used to edify. And even in correction or reprimand, be done in love. Our words should be used in even those circumstances when we reprimand or correct or even discuss how we are feeling with others. It should be used in a way that that is edifying, and it should be done in the, in, a, in a in a way that portrays love to others. Because a lot sometimes, and it's hard, you know. It's very difficult because when we are angry, when we, when we are hurt, or when we want to correct a situation, sometimes the words that come out are not ideal. And, but we must always seek to, seek to, to, to find out or to, to kind of internalize how will my words, how will the words that I plan to say affect others will it affect them positively or negatively is it that i'm just exercising my authority or is it that i'm trying to help this person to be better and sometimes as as, as it says you know as the phrase goes you know sometimes it's not even what is said but how it is said so that is also uh, that is also something that we have to be mindful of how we say what we say because we can always speak our truth 
And we can always be clear and say, boy, we are being honest and upfront with someone. But are we speaking in love? Are we speaking that the truth in love and in meekness and in humility and trying to assist and help the person to be better? Or are we doing it with a spirit of pride? Are we doing it to big up ourselves? Are we just doing it to say, we just attack with truth and we know business what the result will be? But even in those situations, we should be edited and not tearing down. So, that is in terms of edification. The third point I want to make, and this is also very important, are our words a reflection of who we claim to be? So we claim to be Christians, we claim to be the light, but are our words a reflection that we are children of God? Colossians 4 verse 6 indicates to us that let our conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that we may know how to answer everyone. And this was more so speaking in terms of us um, testifying or helping others in, in, in terms of knowing the right way and the true way through Christendom. So though this is speaking about our conversation and a lot of full of grace, seasoned with salt, and helping us to know how to answer everyone, it is, it is always good that in our general, outside of, outside of us evangelizing, it is, always, it is always good for us to also be mindful that our word should be a reflection of what of who we are and what we say and what we claim to be matthew 12 verse 37 states that for by our words or for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy condemned so again the power of words and the fact that it's a reflection of our testimony it should be a reflection of our testimony we have to guard the words that flow from our mouth because it is a reflection of us. It's a reflection. And that brings me to the final point that I want to make this morning. Are our words glorifying God or are they serving the plans of the enemy? And this for me is one of the most powerful and sobering um, areas this morning because the truth is a lot of us from time to time fall short in this area and we don't even recognize it all we say and all we do are to glorify god anything else that we do or say is serving the enemy so matthew 5 verse 37 brings it very clear to us it says but let your yes be yes and your no be no, for whatever is more than these is, is from the evil one. So again, it is, it is a very stark reminder that whatever we say should really reflect the Lord and should really reflect our testimony of being children of God. Because... Anything else that we say, anything else that we do, once it is not a reflection of God, then we are in trouble. Colossians 3 verse 17 again reminds us that whatever we, we do, whatever we, whatever we do in word or whatever we do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So the truth is, and these, to, to be, again, I would, I would want to make a disclaimer here. Because are perfect in these regards. Our words are not always edifying. Our words are not always truthful. Our words are not always a reflection of who we are. And our words are not always a reflection of God himself. But let us 
do an audit this morning. Let us review our words. Let us scrutinize our words. Let us look at it some more to ensure that whatever we say and whatever we do matches up with what God wants. So, as I conclude, I just want to say that as believers, as children of God, words are important. Words are what we use to testify to others. Words are what we use to, to basically evangelize. But our word must also be a reflection of who we are and what we are about. Because if our words don't match up, match up with our actions, then we are also in trouble. You know, the phrase says, action speaks louder than words. But again, the power of words cannot be underestimated, cannot be understated. Because words can build up, words can tear down. There is life and death in the power of the tongue. So let us be mindful of the words that we speak. Words that we even speak over our lives. Words that we speak over our children's lives. Words that we speak of our friends, our relationships, because words are powerful. For some of us, people say we are we have goat mouth, as the Jamaican phrase would. Say. Because sometimes when we speak certain things, it's like they come to they come to light. But that is the power of words. So we have to be mindful of the words that we speak. We have to be mindful of the power of the tongue. Because, again, we could be speaking life in our situation. We could be prospering our situation. Or we could be harming it by the words that we speak. So let us be mindful. Let us do a daily audit of our words. Even before our words come out of our mouths. Let us use, let us use wisdom. Let us examine our words before they even come out. Being used to edify are our words being used to build up? Are our words, are our words like a sweet-smelling savor? Are are they tearing down? Are they helping others to show our love? Or do we demonstrate hate and unforgiveness to others through our words? Again, it is a difficult task, and. It is something that all of us are guilty of from time to time. And maybe I'm even speaking to the converted, speaking to the choir in this regard. But I believe that there are eras in our lives, even if we are working on this as one of our uh, missions in life, to, to guard our tongue and to ensure that what we say is always meaningful and good and honorable and in love. There are times when we fail. But the good thing is that the Lord is there to help us in this journey. The Lord is there to help us to ensure that what we say is a reflection of who we are and what we say is a reflection of Him. Psalm 19 verse 14, and I'm sure many of us know this. Let the, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my Redeemer. It is something that we repeat so often. It is something that we say if somebody wakes us up in the middle of the night, we are able to recite it. But let us not just say it. Help, let us ask the Lord to help us to let it become our lifestyle. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us personalize it. Let us meditate upon it in all that we do and in all that we say. Let us pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with a heart of humility. I come before you this morning, Lord, with a heart of introspection, Lord, 
into my own life and into my own doings lord lord i recognize that i have come short i have sinned in many ways lord and have come short of your glory and one such way lord is the fact that my words are not always uplifting my words are not always demonstrate thing love but lord help us as your people help me to speak words that en empower words that uplift words that speak love words that are truthful words that reflect the fact that i am a child of god and words that reflect that you are my father you are my king lord help us as your people lord to reflect the light that is within us lord help us not to be on the side of the enemy through words that are not uplifting through words that sometimes are deceitful through words that sometimes tear down lord but help us to recognize the power that is within our words and help us lord to speak positive speak light speak love speak things that are good speak things that are of good report lord help us to shun the things that are and the words that are not of you words that are not uplifting lord and help us to also speak to our situations that are high lord let us speak positive into it lord whether it be our health situation lord help us to minister to our own selves through our words through your word lord your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path lord your word is powerful sharper than any two-edged sword so lord help us to cling to your word and speak your word over our situations lord if it's financial issues that we are going through lord help us to use our words to minister to those situations lord help us not to think and speak negativity over our own lives but lord help us to use our words and the power of our words to minister to the situations that are happening in our lives and to speak life into those situations lord help us lord as well lord help us to to not speak negativity of others but lord help us to demonstrate love towards each and every person that we come across lord because that is the true way that we can minister to others our lifestyle is important lord but equally important are our words and the words that we speak each day lord let our words be seasoned with salt let our words be uplifting help our words to be something that others are drawn to us because of our words but let not our words be something that help others to be drawn away from us and drawn away from your word and drawn away from your promises so lord as we think and audit as we assess evaluate scrutinize our words this morning lord help us to be honest with ourselves let us be honest with others where we need to apologize lord help us to apologize where we need to to think before we say help us lord in that regard and where we need to dwell more in your word so that it may be a guide to us in our own speech lord help us so lord i put before you these situations lord and and put before you our words lord may we even speak life over our nation lord a lot is going on in this country lord but lord help us as your people to intercede on behalf of our country help us to speak life in our nation jamaica lord help us to speak life over the leadership whether government or opposition help us to speak life help us to speak love in all circumstances lord and help us to 
recognize that Lord we are your mouthpiece in this world and Lord if our words are not a reflection of you Lord all will be in so Lord I pray even at this time Lord that you will help us to guard our words Lord and even Lord I I, I think of even that hurricane or that storm that is forming Lord Gonzalo Lord and I pray Lord that you will have your way Lord I pray Lord that you will you will deal with that storm accordingly Lord and help us as your people to intercede in these matters Lord and to spend less time spend less time gossiping Lord and more time speaking life into situations and more time speaking love and more time spending time in your word and edifying others because Lord this is your will for us that we use our words to build up and not to tear down so Lord I pray that you will continue to minister to our hearts Lord each and every day each moment of the day and may you empower us Lord to do not only do what is right but to say what is right so lord we give you thanks and we give you praise lord that you have blessed us to see another day and lord may we use our time wisely may we count our days wisely and continue to use our time and our words wisely i continue to pray that you will protect guide and direct each and every one that is watching this stream this morning each and everyone who has joined us this morning i pronounce a blessing upon each and every one of them i pronounce life health strength wealth on everyone who is watching everyone who will watch later i pronounce peace love joy and may lord we continue to pronounce these things over lives of others and over our own lives in your holy and righteous name i pray in the name of none other than your son jesus christ i pray amen amen so i want to thank you again for joining me this morning and i will just encourage you if you have missed out on any of the streams that have gone forth before i pray i i encourage you to you you we have we have the streams on facebook you can always feel free to go back if you have missed any of them we have it on youtube and we have many platforms that you can feel free to listen and be empowered by the word that the Lord has laid on the hearts of his servants. So I encourage you to continue tomorrow as someone else will share. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless each and every one of us here. And I just want to say, have a wonderful and a God-blessed day. And may we continue to use our words to empower let us continue to use our words to edify. Let us continue to use our words as a reflection of ourselves and a reflection of God. Have a wonderful, godly, and peaceful day.